on Giants. Mounds, Monsters, Myth and Man, or Why We Want to Be Small, by Brad Lockwood. Copyright 2010, Brad Lockwood, All Rights Reserved. An Embarrassment of Riches. Giants exist, as do their opposite. Pygmies in Africa and Australia, and now hobbits on Flores. In October of 2004, a team of Australian and Indonesian researchers offered astonishing evidence. An excavation of a cave on Flores, an island in Indonesia, turned up remains best described as, quote, Lilliputin, end quote, or, as some team members preferred, quote, The Hobbit, from J.R.R. Tolkien's epic novels, The Lord of the Rings. Locally, on Flores, the current inhabitants of the island refer to these small people as Ibu Gogo, or, quote, the grandmother who eats anything. A find so recent to defy consensus or categorization, yet, this race of people, standing around three feet tall and exhibiting classic hominid characteristics, has turned the entire scientific community on its head. Archaeologists, anthropologists, botanists, linguists, and ethnologists are struggling to explain such a find, and why so recent. Both the find and proof of habitation. Hominids thriving millions of years after their assumed, documented extinction? Far removed on a remote island, too, suggesting they either swam or, quote, accidentally, end quote, drifted there? Footnote. Which also highlights the arrogance of Homo sapiens towards our ancestors and their capabilities. Accidental voyages versus intentional. Proof of boats goes back 40,000 years. And as Dave Meltzer, Henderson Morrison professor of prehistory at SMU offered, quote, finding and dating artifacts means there are more and older. Even worse, or inspirational, depending on which scientist and what field you approach, are major ongoing finds at a site called Damanzi in the Republic of Georgia, suggesting that Homo erectus may have moved much farther north, much earlier than ever contemplated. A trove of spectacularly well-preserved human fossils, stone tools, and animal remains dated to around 1.75 million years ago. Has been called an embarrassment of riches. The site in Georgia is challenging our very notion of history and mankind. Recent hominid inhabitants on Flores? Homo erectus in the Republic of Georgia? Fossils in Asia are a little more than a million years old. European hardly 800,000. Who were and how did these early ancestors of Homo erectus, that's us, end up in Eastern Europe? We thought they went to Asia in extinction. Was the Black Sea more ideal? more probable? Maybe Eden wasn't in southern Iraq after all. Even more unnerving are results of radiocarbon dating on charcoal from a cave on Gibraltar, announced in September of 2006. Yes, the Rock of Gibraltar, on the southern tip of the peninsula of Iberia, the gateway of the Atlantic and the Mediterranean, may have been, quote, the last rock refuge, end quote, of Neanderthals. Thought extinct, displaced or inbred with, and erased by us, some 35,000 years ago, this charcoal and stone tools also discovered earlier on site in Gorham's Cave on Gibraltar, show that our most recent, huge and hairy competing cousins persisted another 11,000 years. Perhaps drawn by the high rocky peaks and prime hunting conditions, the last of the Neanderthals are believed to have been trapped by such a choice locale. Climate change, another ice age, this one fatal, starved them into extinction. Or did it? For decades, if not centuries and millennium, Homo sapiens have gained great comfort in believing in our dominion over the planet, alone for the past 35,000 years. So how on earth could Neanderthals, considered less adaptable than us... Footnote. 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 Gorillas previously thought to have no mental capacity to use tools, were recently vindicated. Scientists from the Wildlife Conservation Society and the Max Planck Institute for Evolutionary Anthropology in Germany, and I quote, observed two gorillas in the Congo Republic 
using tree branches and other objects to help with tasks, end quote. Other examples, using a branch to determine the depth of water, as well as a support cane to dig herbs and as a makeshift bridge. Chimpanzees are already known to use sticks to fish for termites in mounds. Unintelligent, thus extinct, have persisted far longer than thought. Neanderthals on Gibraltar show we've now owned the earth for only 24,000 years. And then there is the enigma of Flores. Hominids thriving until only 12,000 years ago? Our perceived ascendancy has now been chopped in half. Meanwhile, our inferior ancestors, Homo erectus, have disproved our supposed monopoly over Europe by being uncovered in Georgia. Our dominion is but a myth. Is it no wonder that Bigfoot enthusiasts and creationists favor faith over scientific evidence? Science is evolving with each new discovery. Theory is reworked and disproved. But faith is consistent, unwavering, despite evidence to the contrary. Why read and contemplate reports and radiocarbon dates when you can know in your heart? In reality, the discovery of very recent hominids in Indonesia should not have surprised so many. Scientists need evidence, though. Without, they are mere speculators or folklorists. To quote Kate Wong from her revealing article in September's Scientific America, 2006, November 2nd, entitled, The Littlest Human. Perhaps, it has been proposed, some of these offshoots of the Homo lineage survived until historic times. Maybe they still live in remote pockets of Southeast Asia's dense rainforests, awaiting or avoiding discovery. On Flores, oral histories hold that the Ibu Gogo was still in existence when Dutch colonists settled there in the 19th century. And Malay folklore describes another small, human-like being known as the Orang Pendak that supposedly dwells on Sumatra to this day. Another example of a potentially existent but as of yet unconfirmed species is the Mapinguari of the Amazon. So pervasive are stories of this giant, quote, sloth-like monster the scientists have organized expeditions to find and document it. All unsuccessful thus far. Still accounts exist, with members of the Caratiana tribe claiming to have seen and been affected by the Mapinguari's powers, said to include changing day to night and possessing a bad smell that made me dizzy and tired. I fainted and I came to. The Mapinguari was gone. Footnote. Footnote. From an interview with Giovaldo Caritariana, member of the Cariana tribe, reported by Larry Moulter in his New York Times article, quote, A huge Amazon monster is only a myth, or is it? July 8, 2007. Most scientists believe the story, memory and or myth, of the Mapinguari traces back to the giant ground sloth, the massive mammal that was bigger than an elephant, but thought extinct for thousands of years. But contemporary accounts of encounters continue, and scientists still search, in part based on the vastness of the Amazon, as explained by Dr. Glenn Shepard, Jr., an American ethnogeologist and anthropologist. Quote, There's still an awful lot of room out there for a large sloth to be roaming around. End quote. Perhaps the sole certainty is that we'll never know our true family tree, nor confirm what may be out there. Once a definitive theory is tested, seemingly proven, another discovery invalidates it and the cycle starts anew. Consider this. For decades we have been told that Homo erectus simply didn't have the physical anatomy for speech, a major differentiation between us and them. Again quoting Kate Wong from another article in the same issue of Scientific American entitled, quote, The Human Odyssey, end quote, and regarding Homo erectus. Quote, Its spinal cord was too small to control with sufficient precision the muscles involved in speech production. How did we know this? Based on a single Homo erectus skeleton, that's how, named Turkana Boy, that's how. And when compared to the remains found in Georgia, and after analysis by Mark Meyer of the University of Pennsylvania, Decades of documentation, dissertations, theories, and conferences all proved moot. Continuing with Wong, quote, It turns out Turkana Boy 
had a disease that constricted his spinal cord and is therefore not representative of the normal H. erectus condition, end quote. 